and we are live thank you everyone for joining uh, this week uh, qa insights live so this week we have uh, roger from abstracta who is going to take us uh, through uh, jmeter uh, dsl please say hi uh, in the chat uh, if you are in linkedin uh, i cannot see you if you are in youtube yes i can uh, stream your uh, comments let us welcome roger hi roger how are you hi nice see you i'm good thank you so please say hi to roger in the chat uh, we are going to uh, deep dive into uh, dsl so roger uh, could you please enlighten us because uh, since we met in a clubhouse you already gave us some uh, introduction to dsl so what's new uh, in dsl so what's new i mean um in the last weeks i haven't missed or we haven't missed much time on implementing new features we have implemented mainly some bug fixing that the users have reported. Uh, we are planning uh, still to do the release for 1.0 uh, that is planned to be uh, attacked in this quarter. So that's kind of the news. Um, I don't recall if there was some other release uh, with major features since we last talked, but we can, you get, or someone can check there in the releases. I mean, the all the releases are oh it's not here well anyways <laughs> it's around here but yeah uh no much no much news i, I guess since we last talk <laughs> okay that's fine yeah anyway we will uh just refresh ourselves with the jmeter dsl concepts this video with the demo so before we get started uh let us thanks our sponsor redline 13 if you want to run a high scale load test in jmeter on your own infrastructure please check it out redline13.com and without further ado so what are the contents today roger what are we are going to learn from you today okay so the main idea uh, today is do a live demo of what is the experience of starting a, a project or including jmeter dsl into a project uh give you kind of the, the the insight on what is are the benefits of using the DSL because we have discussed about this but it's nice to have it like presented and you can see actually how you interact or how you start creating a test plan there and what are the differences by uh, using the DSL compared to using JMeter itself mm -hmm. so we are going to to do a live demo about that and then we are going to to explain some of the features we uh, are going to see how much time we have to uh, show different parts of the DSL or features. And obviously we'll give some uh, questions for the end and you can ask and we, we can discuss or show some features uh, live. I mean, uh, it's not, it's, I, I expect it to be kind of that dynamic. And you, Naveen, if you want to see something, uh, something in particular or have uh, some question, please ask at any time and, and we, yes. we can answer them. Sure, yeah. People are saying hi to you, uh, Saurabh, Diptendu, Raju, uh, baby ryan so please say hi to our audience <laughs> thank you <laughs> but hi <Cool>. so uh <laughs> can we get started with the demo uh screen sharing roger yeah sure okay let's see okay do you yes. see my yes. screen yes uh, let me uh, start something that i missed yeah, so you can see what keys I, I'm typing. So let's start by creating a new project. I will use IntelliJ, which is the ID I usually use for doing some programming on this and like. And let's start a new project. And let's call it, I know, uh, JMeter DSL. We are starting from scratch. <laughs> yeah, we are starting from scratch. This is not the way we usually encourage teams to work. I mean, usually you already have um, a project, uh, an application, or the code of, of an application. Ideally, it could be Java, Java project, but it can be any project. But we encourage teams or people uh, to include the performance test inside the same project of the application. So you have both things version, and you know what uh, this particular uh, performance script is testing. And you can also uh, do more continually performance testing of your application by including it in your CI CD pipeline. So that's the usual way we encourage people. But for doing some demos, 
And since I don't have a, a code of an application right now to test uh, and to show you, we will start from scratch. Uh, the, the idea or the general flow is mostly the same. Uh, oh. You just, I will start a project from scratch. This is a so, uh, minimum uh, JDK is eight or 11 for this DSL? Uh, eight, yes. Eight. Okay. You you have to, to have at least eight for the DSL to work because it's compiled with eight. So now we have a project. We are going to start with the very basics that is adding a dependency, uh, adding some dependencies to the project. So I will do this. Dependencies. Uh, could you please increase the font size? Uh, it's too Sorry? small. Font size. Ah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, let me see. It's not there. No. <laughs> so you need to go to properties or settings. Uh, yeah, I can do that. I was trying with the keyboard shortcut, but it's, it was not working. Uh, either? No. Yeah, the right it? side, I think, the first one, appearance. Sorry? The appearance and behavior. The first ah. tab you selected, right? Yeah, that's the one. The right side, we can see the custom font, the top. Ah, yeah. Let's do this. Sorry, I usually use the keyboard, but I don't know why it don't work. Is that better? Do you want it no, bigger? still small. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me try again with the keyboard shortcut. I don't know why it's not working. Nope. No, it's not working. Let's do preferences again. Mm. 24. No, it's increasing the, the other fonts. Okay, not the I think it's the editor one, I guess, editor. Yeah, I mean, it's not here, uh, I guess. Let's let's put this back. Let's go to editor, maybe an editor. Right side font, yeah. Mm. Down, you third see? one. Ah, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, size, let's do 20. Is fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, better. Uh, okay. Good. So uh, I added these dependencies. These are these two are usual uh, test dependencies. They are just for running tests. Any Java project usually use these dependencies. And this dependency is actually the dependency that gets you the Shemeter uh, Java DSL. Uh, something interesting. I will update here so it don't lose the dependencies. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, sorry, it's not correct. Let's fix this. Okay. Uh, right now we have it. Okay, something interesting is that you don't have to actually have Shameter installed. You don't need any previous uh, setup, but, uh, aside from the fact that you have to have a uh, Java installed and, and Maven in this case. But just with this, you can start creating a test. I will start with a new class, uh, performance test, let's name it. And let's add a test. And yeah, let's just put test on it. Let me move this apart. Okay. Uh, there is something. What is? Okay. I don't know why it's not. Sorry, right now. Let's see. Mm. Bad, bad. Otherwise, I can start with a new project, but I don't know why it's not solving right now the dependencies. Uh, we are Russian. just working a few it's minutes. It's still downloading, ago, so. I guess, the dependencies. Sorry? Uh, dependencies ah, it's still working. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. OK. OK, right now we have this. And right now we can do something like import static shameter DSL. Uh, let's import everything. And with this, we can start do creating a test plan. A test plan is, if you're already familiar with Shameter, mm -hmm. is the basic uh, uh, block that allows you to configure what uh, the, the test or the performance test will include. In this case, uh, you can see that uh, it automatically completes the IDE, automatically suggests or shows me what is available. So this is nice because you can start working for example i will need a thread group and you can see all the options in fact if i do control she i can see inline documentation which is usually a little better than what shemeter does because shemeter provides you some 
labels on the things that you can set, but it doesn't provide you like with advices or uh, documentation right there where you're using the Shemitar ID. You have to go to some manual or to some tutorial to understand the component or the different aspects. And in here, for example, you can see that the threads uh, allow you to simulate concurrent virtual users. Iteration is how much, how many times a virtual user will execute the, the contents of the thread group. So mm -hmm. you have inline documentation right there, and it's pretty easy to, to, to review. Got it. Okay. So whatever we see in JMeter, uh, we can uh, see it here, the properties. Yes, yes. So, so uh, for example, let's see this in JMeter. I will create a simple test plan first here, and then I will show you how this looks in JMeter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we can compare the two and we can see the main difference there. I will just create a thread group with one uh, user and mm -hmm. one iteration. And I will put inside of it as a, an element, I will put um, something that HTTP. And again, you can see all the options here that you have yes. with, with HTTP. Uh, if you want to search for something else, for example, let's say, I don't know, I want to use some CSV. I, I already uh, see all the available options. So this is kind of uh, simpler or faster in some way to Shemeter. Uh, we will do this again uh, in Shemeter and I will show you the speed of this. But you can see that it's quite uh, fast to implement something. Let's do an HTTP sampler, sorry. <coughs> uh, to HTTP uh, open cart dot abstracta dot US. Um, Okay, um, right now, what we can do is just, you, you have different options here with the test plan, but we are going just to run it. With just this, you have a test plan that runs, that execute a request, a, a, an HTTP request, uh, just a simple get. If you want to do a post, you can do, like with dots, you will see that I just press dot and then you have all the options available to, to do different things. For, for example, if I want to do a post, here you can see that I have the post with a body and a content type. So we are also enforcing uh, good uh, practices because usually when you use Shemeter, for example, for doing a post, you might miss uh, setting up the content type, which is a usual uh, misstep or, or issue. Uh, but here we are encouraging you, are enforcing you to use good practices and don't forget to set up the proper settings. Uh, so with this, we can just run it. And it's running, it's parsing. You see, let's see, it's just the, the output. <clears throat> okay, you see one execution, there were zero, zero errors, but this is just like a summary of the execution. We will see in a little bit how we can further visualize or review this, these contents. Um, right now, let's, okay, we have this test plan. Let's save it as save as shmx uh, you have already showed this feature in in one of your previous videos but let's do a sample uh, shmx i want you to i want to show you uh, how this test plan usually looks in shmeter and and what are the main difference uh, you can see here that the test plan is quite simple to read you see all the options and if we see the shmx you see that there are a lot of options and a lot, a lot of settings that is quite complex to, to, to review or to see the changes and the like. So um, not only that, I mean, it's easier to review and to see all the configurations, but let's open this on, on Shemeter. I already have this similar test plan here. And in fact, what it provides you <clears throat> is the DSL also includes some good practices regarding the test plan configuration. For example, it's usually required to add a cookie manager, a cache manager, and those are automatically added by, by the DSL. This view result tree is not added. I, I, this, in fact, is not the same test plan. I could open it, but this test plan, uh, in fact, will look like this. Okay. Another advantage of the DSL expression or how you visualize the test is that in Shemeter, to understand the full extent of a test plan, you will have to go over each of these elements and review each of the settings, for example, here in advance, 
and understand what are the default settings to see if something is changed. Here in the DSL, you have everything explicit. I mean, if I use embedded resource, for instance, uh, download embedded resource, you see it right here, and it's quite short, quite short to, to, to review and understand. In here, in the in the Shameter GUI, uh, this embedded resource will mean these settings. And if you are like reviewing the test plan, you might easily miss that this uh, using that that particular setting. That Correct. is kind of another advantage. Uh, obviously, so if you are uh, missing uh, some properties, uh, for example, in DSL, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We are not adding, uh, say, some optional properties. So by mm -hmm. default, uh, what it will take? The, by default, it usually uses the same defaults that Shameter uses. Okay. There are some uh, special difference or particular difference when we consider that uh, the Shameter default value is not the most uh, common setting for implementing performance tests. For example, mm -hmm. if you start a test plan from the from the basics, uh, Shemeter will not include these two elements, but the, it will include them if you create it from a test plan. For example, if you go here, create test plan, um, uh, simple HTTP, I think it is, uh, create, okay, create, uh, no. Well, in this case, it added a user-defined variables. I think that is when you use recording. But in any case, I mean, uh, yeah, the default the fonts are usually the same as Shameter. There are some particular differences on, on some scenarios, but we document such difference on the on the element. So in these cases, if you go here, the documentation will explicitly say, okay, this or for some reason this is different from the default of Shameter because blah blah blah. So that's. <laughs> I think that answers part of the uh, yeah. question. So it will follow all the JMeter rules. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the the DSL has some kind of custom features or custom uh, elements, but in general, it's just a wrapper of JMeter. I mean, it's just a, a, an API to use JMeter underneath. Correct. <clears throat> okay. So now let's um, let's run this, but let's see the results live while we are executing. For doing that, we can use some of the resource tree visualizer. And if I execute this, you will see uh, live, uh, lively uh, what are the requests and responses that Shemeter is executing. You see it here and you can uh, review each of the request body and response data. This is the same as the view resource tree on Shemeter, but the nice thing is that you are uh, using this DSL API, and you can also see some parts of the logic, uh, something that you have already uh, show um, is the the use the usage of show in GUI, which basically allows you to see the entire test plan on the GUI. You can also use show in GUI in some particular test element. I can show you that as well. But here, for example, you can see the entire test plan. Um, <coughs> And you can even run it and debug it and the like. Um, some of the uh, more like kind of advanced features that we include in the DSL, for example, is the the dashboard. Oh, I have to include some particular dependency for that because we consider that uh, that mm, not all the users might 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 use it, but in some cases, it's nice to have it. So. Here I have included another module of Shemeter DSL. So in the core module, we include like the basic or most used stuff, but there are some other modules that allows you to use some advanced features or uh, extended features. For example, uh, the dashboard is one of them. There is also GraphQL as another module. ShadyBC is another model, but the core HTTP and general uh, logic is in the, in the core DSL uh, model. So now let's do dash, dashboard visualizer, dashboard visualizer. And just with that, we can run this. In this case, since we are doing just one request, uh, showing the dashboard doesn't make much sense, but we can just uh, tune it. And you can see here that you get the graphs about the number of active threads, 
the response times, the number of transactions, and the number of responses, and the general summary, all in one place and only one screen. That usually in JMeter, you could do it by adding different listeners and review them. Uh, let's make it. Let's make the test plan a little uh, more interesting. Let's do uh, I don't know ten iterations. Let's add yeah. um, a timer. So uh, uniform random timer from ten seconds. Um, no, from one second to five seconds. This is our mil millisec. Oh, sorry, milliseconds. So that's why you see one thousand and five thousand. <laughs> but let's run this and this will allow us to see the dashboard in more like live fashion because we are having more requests. So this dashboard visualization is a new feature, uh, Roger, because I never seen this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not that new feature. I think it has uh, more than six months or something like that. But okay. it, as I mentioned to you, it's a, a separate model. It's all of these, uh, it's documented on the user guide. If you go here, you will see all kind of the main features of the DSL or and how to use them, when to use them. Um, for instance, uh, <clears throat> the dashboard is in reporting. And if we go here to like built-in uh, stats, you can see all the graphs and, and explanation on when to use it, how to use it, and like. Got it. So this is uh, an option. I mean, you have the view resource tree or the resource tree visualizer that I mentioned to you. This is kind of a custom component that was mentioned that we have some kind of custom built-in features uh, to make things easier while using the DSL. Um, uh, another way to visualize in te uh, the results is you can also uh, dump the results to a usual sheet JTL. So for example, you have JTL writer and you can write all the results to a file and then you can uh, open that file with a meter, uh, uh, GUI, or you can also load them to another tool that allows you to see Shameter statistics in, in better ways. But in general, this is more like for offline um, analysis. You can also use HTML reporter, uh, where here you specify a directory. And if we do this, it will generate an H. Oh, uh, let's do the test uh, a little shorter. Sorry. Let's do or Let's remove the random timer so it will execute faster. So can we uh, run this in a CLA mode as well? Yeah, sure. I mean, since this uses, in fact, the test that I'm, I'm showing you is using JUnit, as you see, see here. Um, JUnit is uh, the most popular testing framework in Java to do tests. So uh, as with any test that you can run in Java with JUni, you can use it for running the, the performance test. Uh, and it's just executing the usual Maven clean, clean test or Gradle clean test or any of the, and you can even use any of the uh, CI CD integrations with JUnit, with which allows you to see the reports over time, uh, etc. cetera. Um, uh, directory. Report. Oh, well, uh, let me delete this. Uh, this is kind of a safeguard that we have added to avoid uh, users <laughs> to unnecessarily uh, overwrite an, a previous report. Usually, <clears throat> in this case, you will uh, append some daytime to the report. But yes. here you can see that. Oh, uh, let's open this. Open yeah, we need something close. unique, right? Every time. Yeah. And you can get this report, and then you might generate that report in CI/CD and open the HTML on the execution and see all the the results. And here you have the usual JMeter charts. I mean, this is not uh, new on the DSL. JMeter already provides the HTML reporter. Uh, the good thing about the the DSL is that it allows you to pretty easily use it. I mean, you don't have to execute something after the test plan runs, you just include uh, an element on the test plan as a listener, and it will automatically generate the report for you. Yeah, this is excellent uh, integration with the JMeter. Yeah. Another another option, I mean, uh, usually these, these other alternatives are good. Uh, I mean, the dashboard is nice for having, like when you are executing on your machine, it's not very useful when you run, when you run it on, on CI CD. The same goes with the resource tree visualizer. JTL and HTML 
a little, are a little better for CICD. But another thing that you might uh, want to do for reporting is using the Influx TV listener, which uh, allows you to send all the statistics of the execution to Influx DB. Influx DB will store it, each of the executions, all the information about them, and then you can visualize them in Grafana, for instance. Uh, mm -hmm. I will, I can show you this live, but I already have run this. So in general, the configuration is pretty simple. You here configure something like this. And uh, this will tell, OK, here is InfluxDB. You have to write everything to there with this uh, DB name, Shemeter. And what you will get with this is an execution like uh, this one. Well, uh, I have to <laughs> change this because same, I have, uh, yeah. So let's do this. And you see here all a dashboard with all the information. You can even customize this dashboard. Um, uh, this information, I mean, the setup of InfluxDB and Grafana, this Grafana is the, the interface that we are using to query all the information from InfluxDB and show it in, in graphs and dashboard. Uh, you can get it on the user documentation. There is also a section about that uh, in reporting. Uh, here it is. And um, there is a Docker Compose that you can use to experiment and try this in, in your in your own environment. But the nice thing about this is that you can deploy it. I mean, you can uh, create a server with InfluxDB and Grafana, and you can uh, in the CI/CD send all the statistics to to InfluxDB, and then later on review all these uh, statistics and review historic runs of the of the of the performance test. So it's nice for having kind of uh, analytics in the long term, because the other options that I've shown so far are more like one shot uh, analysis. This allows you to see uh, the evolution over time of the performance test in different executions as the application under test changes or environment changes or, or whatever. Okay, so these are kind of the main reporting uh, features that you might use. But uh, another thing that when you start implementing a performance test and you usually uh, are limited by is the hardware where you are executing this test. I mean, uh, you might execute this test as I'm doing right now from this machine or from the machine that uh, actually executed the test. But uh, the you by doing that, you will be limited by the hardware that is actually executing the test plan. Usually, for overcoming that limitation, what you have to use is kind of a cluster or a cloud service that provide this cluster, a cluster of agents that can generate more load that you your that one machine cannot generate. In this scenario, you have several options as well. Uh, for this, you can use here running, and we, for example, you can include a model. Uh, in particular, uh, let's just change this with Blaze Meter. Um, by doing that and re-importing, uh, we can use running. And here, you can use for it. Mm, it's still importing. It's still downloading, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can use Blaze Meter Engine. And here, I, you can use system.ketm, for example, BC token. Uh, and just with this, you can run the same test on Blaze Meter. Blaze Meter is a cloud service that allows you to run Shemeter performance test and scales this test across different machines. So it allows you to uh, generate more load than just one machine uh, could do. So you can see that it's pretty simple uh, to scale your performance test to a cloud service. Uh, I can show you, this is, will look in Shemeter, like, in Blaze Meter, sorry, like this. Yeah, we have a question of, from uh, one of the audience, uh, Aller. I think I'm saying it right. Uh, is this integration Sorry? of JMeter in Selenium? JMeter in, Sel in Selenium? No, it's uh, the yeah, DSL. I, is the integration yeah, of JMeter in Selenium? I've seen, I mean, in JMeter, there is, a, I think there is a plugin for running a Selenium script. But what you can do with the DSL that I've seen uh, uh, several users reporting similar scenarios is that you can easily uh, create, I mean, a Selenium test plan here, and also uh, uh, a Meter test plan, all in the same code and execute them in parallel. So you can see in the Selenium results what is the user experience you get on a web page when uh, a performance execution 
it is done at the same time. So when a load execution or, or sub particular load is imposed on the servers. So yes, you can combine them. Uh, you might even yeah trigger things from Selenium test. But yeah, that, that's one of the nice things that I think that this DSL has unlocked on the community that allows you to use the, the DSL or JMeter in, in more ways than you usually, uh, or easier to do uh, in more ways than you usually uh, had with previous version. For instance, I have seen users using, uh, using like some automated frameworks built on top of this DSL that uh, does functional testing with a search, uh, sorry, with rest assured, and then easily transform those functional tests in performance tests using the DSL. And it's pretty easy for them to kind of implement features or uh, new new tools or new <laughs> innovations on top of, of the DSL that were previously kind of hard to do with just the Shemeter the uh, mm -hmm. approach. So, but uh, the DSL is not built off uh, on top of Selenium, right? It is a separate entity, no. right? Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, the DSL Shemeter uh, already provides some some kind of Java API uh, that you can use or import in 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 any Java code. Uh, the major issue with that is that it's not expected to be used in that way. So when you try to use it, uh, it's kind of is variables. Is some things are difficult. You have to understand uh, how things uh, work internally on each of these elements on JMeter and what are the default settings. So what we build, like this DSL, abstracts all, all this complexity and provides you this uh, simple way of creating test plan and run them. That is kind of the main feature. It's not that we are re-implementing an engine on JMeter. We are just importing JMeter and providing kind of a simpler interface that you can use or simpler API that you can use uh, for interacting with Shemeter and executing Shemeter. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, we can continue with the Blaze Meter thing. Yeah, I mean, Blaze Meter was just that. You can do the, the a similar thing or mostly the same thing with Octoperf. It should, if you prefer to use Octoperf, which is another cloud uh, service for this. <laughs> So do we have a, suppose if we are running in our own AWS infrastructure, so can yeah. we integrate? Yeah, sure, as well. Uh, so with Octoperf, uh, as you can see, it's mostly the same. Obviously, I will change this with Octoperf uh, token or something like that. That is a environment variable that has me, my token. And uh, just with that, you can execute on Octoperf. Let me show you really quick this, and you okay. will get something like this, and you can see uh, live results. The good thing about uh, Blaze Meter and Octoperf is that you have already all different infrastructure already built. You don't have to configure anything on your side, and you have all these reporting or uh, reporting features that allows you to see uh, reports in a better way. Which with Grafana and InfluxDB you will have to also kind of customize or configure on your own, and you have to uh, uh, maintain your own infrastructure. So yeah, there is another option to these uh, paid services because these services provide some free tier for experimenting. But in the end, if you want to actually run a load test with uh, a lot of users, you will have to, to pay. But there is another option that you pay in some other way because you have to maintain your own infrastructure and you have to maintain that is pretty expensive on the long term. But if you want, you have a, another option that is using uh, the mechanism that Shaymeter already provides you for creating a cluster. Uh, this uh, mechanism, Shaymeter, you can start Shaymeter in, in a way that is called server mode or a slave mode, where you can uh, start in different machines, a uh, Shaymeter in server mode, and then from one machine, you can connect to these machines as a master, and then you execute in this master the test plan, and the and the distribution of the execution is run on all the on all the nodes. Uh, for this, you just use new distributed Shemeter engine, and here you put all the hosts separated by commas, so all the machines where you want to run them, or when you already have a Shemeter server listening. For example, let's say I don't know uh, ancient one dot 23, 23, I don't know, it depends on the, the port that you might use. And just with this, 
you can execute this test plan on all these agents. Obviously, you will need to maintain these agents, agents uh, update the Shimitary instances, uh, make them run, configure networking, host them. There are some scripts around in GitHub that allow you to set up these AWS agents. Uh, we haven't included that in, in, the, in the project because we think that is part, not part of the scope of the project, but we do provide an interface to easily use this distribute uh, architecture, uh, mm -hmm. shame architecture or solution <clears throat> easily in the DSL. Uh, so do we, we need do to uh, start the engine uh, manually ourselves, these agents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do have to, to start the engines manually because here what the master is doing is connecting to these agents that are already running and mm -hmm. and distribute a shame meter test plan to, 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 to them. Uh, there are explanations about this also in the user guide. Uh, if you go uh, to scale sh here, Shemita remote testing, you can see all the details. In fact, we do provide a Docker Compose example uh, here. So you can experiment with this locally uh, okay. where here in the Docker Compose, <coughs> we just um, uh, run some tests and start a, a Shemitor server, as I mentioned to you, in this case, in the port 2020. And this will uh, test, I mean, execute the, the test on this uh, container uh, using this other ancient. But yeah, you can use this e example to start creating your own inf infrastructure. But again, there are other solutions. I mean, there are scripts that allows you to, for example, to, to set up all these Shemitor ancients on AWS. There is also Redline 13 that abstracts this logic and also uh, provides more reporting on that. In fact, we have some uh, plans for the future, uh, but if possible, to implement an engine on, on Redline 13. We are always open to contributions. So if anyone uh, thinks, OK, I can implement this engine or this new feature in the DSL, you can always submit a pull request, and we are most uh, very eager to 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 help you uh, implementing it if you like, uh, or even if you don't know how to implement these features, uh, we you can even create an issue. That is the usual way that we are working with the DSL. We are trying to not implement things just because we can. <laughs> we are implementing things because someone needs them. So please, if you have any need, just ask them. Usually, we implement features pretty quick. Some others we might decide to not implement, but it depends, right? Uh, if we think that that is very specific need or not, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, if you need something or you have doubts, you can create an issue on the GitHub repository, or you can go to the Discord channel that we have here in the guide. You can see there is a link to the Discord channel, and you can join there, ask questions. We try to help in any. We try to be helpful. We are not going to. To, to to tag anyone because he doesn't know exactly how Shemitor works or something like that. I mean, we are try to we try to be as much helpful as, as we as we can in the introduction to Shemitor DSL, but also in the introduction to Shemitor itself or performance testing. So here you will see that we provide in this guide a very progressive way, and we try to be simple for people that already knows Shemeter or already knows how to do performance testing, but also for people that don't know Shemeter itself. So we start introducing this concept in also this kind of uh, philosophy is on the on the documentation that <coughs> it explains each element, what it does, and you don't have to come up with some previous knowledge of, of Shemeter. If you already know Shemeter, it will be a uh, pretty simple or pretty standard for you to understand the DSL. But if you don't, you can uh, start exploring with the with what we mentioned, for example, doing this and see what each element provides. And you can even search things, as we already mentioned. And you can start getting ideas uh, or using the, the, the guide that I already mentioned. So basically, we have to mentally visualize our JMT uh, test plan then we can easily uh, start writing our uh, DSL here. 
yeah, that might be an option, or you can start experimenting here um, using the show in GUI, as I mentioned to mm -hmm. you. Another thing that you can do, because we are we also provide another tool that is called shmx 2 dsl um, uh, Let me... Okay, uh, so before that, we have one question, uh, Roger. Uh, can we integrate ah, uh, JMeter DSL in Team City? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, Team City, uh, again, any CI CD uh, tool will work with the DSL because you actually run a test uh, with JUnit, or you can use even use test and she. In this case, I'm using JUnit. But for example, I'm using Maven. And if I do Maven clean test in this case, let me see if I, yeah. <clears throat> This command automatically will run the, oh, there is an error. Yeah, let's clean this up. <laughs> okay. If I do this, I am just running test in general, but around, oh, it's not taking the test. I have to add some, some dependency. But in general, yeah, uh, you will execute the test uh, in this way, and it will run the performance test as any other test, and it will run in any continuous integration because all the continuous integration has support for uh, running Maven or, <coughs> or Java project. And in fact, as I mentioned uh, already, not only run it, but to analyze the results because as this test is a shade unit test, you will also uh, be able to take advantage of all already existing integrations on CI CD tools uh, with shade unit reporting. Something that I didn't mention that is quite important and it's different also from uh, JMeter itself, is that you can here, uh, when you run a test plan, you can get the statistics right here. I mean, you can do something like stats equals. Okay, so here I get all the statistics uh, of the test run execution. And then I can use the uh, uh, statistics to do assertions, to check if the uh, performance test went as I expected it to be. For example, uh, assert that. We can have our own SLS to check that, right? Our own what? SLS. Yep, yep. So, oh, sorry. Assert that stats dot, for example, I don't know, you can use by label or you can use <laughs> overall statistics. Let's do overall statistics, sample time, uh, or sample type percentile 99, which is better. Uh, I have to do an import, import static, associate core API in this case, uh, is less than, for example, duration of seconds five. So here, what I'm doing is uh, checking that uh, the statistics or the execution, the sample time percentile 99 is less than five seconds. So this means that the 99% of the request have a, a response time that is under five seconds. So you can see that you can easily uh, put SLAs, as you mentioned, on, on the test plan, which in JMeter is not that simple to, to do. There are tools like Torus, for example, that allows you to do this. Uh, Gatin and, and K6, for example, provide this feature, but JMeter itself doesn't provide this unless you install some plugins and it's not uh, exactly the same. But the good thing about this is that if something, I mean, if this uh, assertion fails, all the test plan will fail. Let's run this just an example. Let's run it and uh, right now it will uh, pass because it's quite uh, generous, the, the number of seconds I, I provided. I, yeah, so all the requests. And we can see here that the average is around, uh, so let's put off milliseconds, I don't know, something that is, is not going to happen, so it will fail. And you can see that here the test uh, should fail. And with that, you can easily identify if your uh, application is uh, performing as expected or not. Uh, you can see here that I was expecting uh, one, uh, 10 milliseconds, and in fact, you, the, the percentile was uh, 20, uh, 250 milliseconds. So you can use this to easily and continually check that certain thresholds on your applications under load are <laughs> respected and you don't get any deviations on the actual performance of the application. So uh, basically, uh, 
in j meter assertions are uh, heavy weight right it it consumes lot of resource so yeah, how this, about in dsl yeah this this is not a j meter assertion i mean it's an assertion that you execute after the j meter execution uh, has uh, run so it's not the same uh, okay. but if you want you can also use assertions as you have shown in your in your previous video on the dsl for example response assertion uh, I don't know. Uh, contains a room, contains to a string. I don't know. Test, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Regarding the performance of this, it's the same performance as Shemeter. I mean, it's, it is just using Shemeter. Um, is there heavy weight or not? It depends. In fact, this is kind of not DSL knowledge. It's in fact Shemeter knowledge. But it depends on the type of assertion that you do. For example, mm -hmm. this contains to a string is quite efficient. It depends on how much big are your responses in this case, how much it will take or how much heavy it will be. Uh, using regexes, some regexes might be performance, some others might not be. So you have to kind of be aware of, of the of the shape meter or in general limitations of doing assertion. I mean, every assertion requires uh, the sample results to be uh, reviewed. In this case, for example, contains with string will go over all the response results, checking for this test, mm -hmm. in, in particular, um, uh, as is uh, a substring uh, comparison is quite uh, efficient and fast. But if you do a regex and the regex is not properly optimized, it might not be that efficient. But in general terms, uh, this kind of thing are not that, I mean, if you do some performance test that is simple, they will not affect that much the performance because usually what it takes much time are the requests themselves and the processing of the of the serialization and deserialization of the responses and it's not the assertion but yeah when you start working with very uh, some advanced uh, <coughs> test plan or performance test you might uh, start having to 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 tune the way you assert certain things but this is like it's not only for Shemeter, it's for any framework. I mean, you have to, in, in any framework, if you use regexes, uh, regular expressions, you 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 might get into some uh, not optimal uh, execution. You have to, to tune them in some sense. Good. Now we have a question from uh, Laxman. Uh, can we convert Jmeter test plan to DSL? Yeah, yeah. That was one thing that I, I was going to mention that I got deviated due to this assertion. But yeah, totally. I mean, that's the the DSL, the JMX to DSL uh, application that I already mentioned. Uh, there is, um, here there's a section about this <coughs> where you can go to releases and download this chart. Um, the chart will automatically generate a test plan, uh, a DSL test plan from JMX. This uh, feature is kind of, it allows you to unlock another level of integrations and possibilities because, for example, you can record a test plan with JMeter proxy or with a, a Chrome extension, the BlazeMeter extension, for example, for recording a flow in a page, then generate a JMX, and then you can use JMX to DSL to convert it to DSL and start working with the DSL itself. I have done this. It's, a, I think, a, a common a use case, but let's show how this works. Um, let me see. I think that I have <coughs> already downloaded. If not, I can re-download it. But let's do uh, Java minus uh, char uh, mx. Ooh, no, I don't have it downloaded. <laughs> okay, let's download it. Uh, so you can see how this flow actually goes. Uh, here I am going to download this char. Okay, yeah, I already had it there. I don't know why the, <laughs> the autocomplete didn't work. Uh, yeah, I know why. Downloads shmx <laughs> to this DSL dot char, and then you just specify a shmx file. For instance, I have one in downloads ua inside demo uh, sample shmx for for example. And let's run this and cross finger. Uh, yeah, you get it here. You have the, the, the entire test plan. In fact, right now I'm using an old version 
So let me let me do something. I will I will use the newer version because it provides some new features. Uh, let me just do a quick setup here around. You're not seeing my screen because I'm using another monitor. But anyways, I will just change the version of the chart with the just downloaded version. I will rerun this. And you can see the, here, uh, let me copy this and paste it on the ID so we better visualize it. We get a fully executable uh, test class. In fact, you can, mm -hmm. if you install Shebang, which is a, a cool tool that I've just recently discovered, uh, it allows you, oh, uh, yeah, performance says, I mean, let's just replace this. <clears throat> you can see that it automatically uh, includes the dependencies that you need for executing this. Uh, right now, it's not <sighs> including this because I'm, I've not added this, but we can remove it from for the for the for this for this sake because I'm not using the the main feature here. I mean, just with that, we, you have almost the the same test plan I was uh, showing previously, uh, and even with some assertion that you might change in the end. I mean, here is checking for no error secure on the test plan, but this is what was the, the original uh, JMS that I showed you on JMeter GUI. Remember that there was a resource tree visualizer. So yeah. And with this, you can do, again, the full cycle. You can convert from JMX. You can then save this as JMX again. If you want, to, I don't know, to use the IDE for some customization, or you can use the show in GUI and then save that in a JMX and use the JMX to the DSL to convert uh, the changes you do in the GUI back to the to the DSL. So yeah, this opens a lot of uh, integrations. And since the ecosystem in JMeter is so rich, you might use it for, I mean, you can combine a, a lot of things, for example, correlation recording. Uh, you can do, I mean, conversions, uh, analysis on JMX, and then convert them back to DSL or vice versa. So yeah, I think that is, this is extreme, extremely helpful. The JMX to DSL uh, currently converts uh, the most used features, but it doesn't convert all that is already supported by DSL. For the version 1.0 that we are expecting to release in this quarter, we expect the JMX to DSL uh, to cover all the features that the DSL already provides. So kind of be complete uh, re in regards of the of the JMX DS, uh, DSL features. Uh, if you find at any point something that is not supported at, at some point uh, by the DSL, uh, for example, let's, let's do a, a quick <laughs> review of this. Uh, let's do, well, I don't have it uh, open here, uh, but uh, it coins at sample, uh, this is not the same. Uh, I expect it not to be to be modified, but let's try it. Okay, so let's put something that is currently not supported by the DSL just for the sake of showing how the conversion will look. But in general, if you see something that is not what you expect or the best solution that you have, again, create an issue on GitHub repository or ask it in the Discord channel and we will uh, implement it. For example, I don't know, XPath extractor is not yet uh, implemented in the DSL. Let's uh, save this. So this is a, and we will see that Shemeter uh, DSL uh, actually converts the test plan, but it uses some non-optimal uh, way of doing it. That is test element XPath extractor GUI. In if we were to to actually implement this in the DSL, we would prefer it to have something like XPath extractor and being just that. But you can see that it actually the JMX to the cell still convert the test plan. This test plan is uh, functional. I mean, this uh, should work if it works on JMeter, the converted test plan uh, should work as well, but it's not optimized. So in those cases, please uh, ask for the features, uh, contact us and we'll gladly evaluate adding the feature and promptly uh, add it as, as we see fit. Cool. So I have a question here regarding uh, the engine we are talking, right? So you mentioned Docker image. So how easy to run in Kubernetes? To run what? 
Kubernetes the test uh, in Kubernetes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, running the if you want to run the the test plan, uh, the the execution of, of the test plan or the the test itself, it's just again, it's like running any test on any Docker image. You just install Java, Maven there, and upload your project on the Docker image, and then run it. You can do that. If you want to have in Kubernetes your own kind of cluster or of shame meter servers or agents to then execute the test against them, it's the same setup that we have done with Docker Compose, but you obviously you have to adapt it to to Kubernetes uh, setups. But yeah, it's totally possible. I mean, in, in the two ways to use Kubernetes as a cluster of execution of test plan or just to uh, run the, the main the master node, let's let's name it, <laughs> that actually uh, orchestrate this test execution. So, do we have any official Helm charts or YAML uh, configs from your team for Kubernetes? Yeah, no, we don't. No. We don't have any. But uh, I, I think that any Kubernetes user should, uh, from the Docker Compose uh, examples that we have provided um, and from this. Uh, Logic uh, uh, from the examples that we provide in general on the DSL should pretty should be pretty easy to set up. I mean, the main com the main complexity on configuring Shemeter clusters uh, as agents uh, is the R R R M I protocol, which requires some tuning on ports opening and setup. But you can go there to the Shemeter guide in fact in the shameter dsl user guide we have pointers on where in the shameter uh, manual or user guide you have to check to set up properly uh, the the cluster but yeah i i think that there is no at least to my knowledge there is no kind of a kubernetes project support for running on the cluster i mean it do it shouldn't be that difficult but in general implementing uh, no, it shouldn't be that difficult if you already know how to uh, create an infrastructure of, Shef of Shemeter engines in general, and you know okay. also Kubernetes. But having an infrastructure, as I already mentioned, is costly because you have to maintain it, you have to set up. It's not uh, it's not uh, straightforward <laughs> in some in some way. Uh, you might have some issues with ports or networking. Uh, but yeah, you can do it. I mean, I think that that's the value in some sense on on using Blaze Meter or Octoperf because they already provide all the infrastructure. It's like uh, it's like comparing AWS or cloud services or platform as a service where you upload your code and you don't care or serverless features that you don't care much about the infrastructure and they are take care of that and upgrading, uh, patching the the OSs and the instances. Uh, that's the same comparison to using your own Shemeter engine cluster infrastructure as to use a cloud service like Blitzmeter, Octoperf, uh, Relay 13, and like. Cool. Yeah, we have got three more minutes, Roger. So anything interesting going on with the DSL project? What's future? Well, What's new? In uh, what what will be uh, new features will be for us? Yeah, the, the the thing that we want to invest the more the most right now is on, on doing this 1.0 release. I mean, the 1.0 release is not that uh, the the application right now is not usable in production. I mean, we we use it as abstracta. Uh, several teams or, or users are using it in production. We don't. We try to not break compatibility, backward compatibility. So this means that. If you create a test plan, we try to not be modified when new versions of the of the DSL um, are released, or try to still work with them. Um, but with 1.0, we want to kind of uh, provide this kind of assurance to people that uh, we are not planning to implement in the near term any backward comp compatible uh, issues. So we are trying right now to to explore what things we want to do before doing the, that, that final release. Uh, so that's now kind of our main focus, aside from implementing features that user uh, requests or bug fixing. Uh, after that, we have some plans. For example, we plan to ease the way of 
this recording interaction that I already mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. We have plans for implementing the DSL uh, adaptations for other languages. So you can use the DSL not only with Java, with, but with other languages. So that, those are kind of the big milestones that we have for the future. We, have, mm -hmm. we don't have dates for them yet, but those are kind of ideas. And obviously, if you are a user and you have ideas and you want to contribute us and help us make the DSL even better, please go ahead. We are eager for that. We are asking also people to go there to GitHub repository and give it a star. That allows us to understand that the community actually is interested in the feature so we can invest more effort on implementing new features and, and more uh, money to it in some sense. Uh, regarding that, uh, the project is open source, it's free to use. We don't collect any metrics, so you can use it as any other open source tool, as you use, for example, Shemitter. And regarding stars, that, that uh, I wanted to mention that, that we give it a lot of, of value to the stars to know if we have to invest further or, or uh, more on this project or not, but also give visibility, the stars give visibility to other users so they can easily, uh, more easily, uh, uh, find the DSL and start using it and contribute to increase the community. In in general terms, we think the DSL as a not only a structured thing. Uh, we are invoking every everyone to be involved. We don't want this to be kind of just abstract to maintain this. We want the community to contribute to it and to maintain it, so as to be a, a long term project that uh, everyone can benefit from it. Cool. So any plans to commercialize or just it will stay no. as open source? No, there are no plans for commercialize. Uh, we we are a strong believer of open source. Uh, we try to contribute as much as we can uh, in the scope of the project that we have. For example, we have this DSL. We also have implemented a virtualiz virtualization service that is called Wiresham. We have other open source projects. But yeah, there are no plans to productize this in, in any way. Um, not in the short term, nor in the long term. So, no. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, I don't see any more questions. So thank you, everyone, for joining uh, this week's uh, live session. Uh, please go to the GitHub repository and star the project, test it, report issues. Roger is uh, eager to fix our uh, defects. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, it's like a power pack, uh, Roger, the whole DSL ecosystem. It's like a boost for uh, developers and testers. Without yeah. opening Jmeter, we can uh, do whatever we want. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's our main focus is like trying to to uh, uh, do more continuous performance testing uh, by uh, reaching or taking Jmeter closer to, to developers and also to performance tester closer to, to developer teams. Mm -hmm. So that, that way we think that we can re, uh, fill up that gap that is not right now between development and the performance testing. We think that we have to, to show them. And the DSL, we think that fills that gap. Uh, that is also felt by, by, by other options, but yeah. Sure. Yeah, thank you, Roger, for joining us. Uh, I hope uh, sure. you get some thousands of stars uh, to your repository uh, <laughs> next week or so. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, we will meet after a couple of months again uh, to see what's going on in the project. OK. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you next week with a different topic. Uh, thank you. Have a happy weekend. Thank, thank you. you very much, Naveen, for this talk. It was really nice. Yeah, thanks, Roger. Bye. Bye.